Hey everyone, I'm Sarah LaVon and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am back for part two, all about preeclampsia or elevated blood pressure in pregnancy. If you haven't seen part one, pause this video, head on over to part one because that sets the foundation for this conversation that we're gonna have today. Today, we are gonna talk about what happens if you are diagnosed with preeclampsia even a gestational hypertension, chronic hypertension, superimposed preeclampsia, your doctor is concerned about your blood pressure in pregnancy and what that would look like for the end of your pregnancy leading into your labor and birth. But before I get started, make sure you subscribe down below, give it a like, share it with a friend, and then let's get going. <laughs> You already know what preeclampsia is because you've watched part one. So let's just say that your provider, your doctor says, hmm, I'm concerned about your blood pressures. They're consistently 140s over 90s. You are at term, so you're 37 weeks and beyond, and they've tested your urine and said, I'm seeing protein in your urine. I'm concerned about preeclampsia. I mentioned this in the first video, but I wanna be very clear that your provider is weighing safety of delivery. If you are at term, you are probably looking at an induction of labor. That is, if your blood pressure is what we call stable. So let's say your blood pressure isn't stable. What's not stable? That would be those blood pressures above 160 over 105, sometimes 110, depending on your provider, but we're gonna go with 105. So let's say you're in your doctor's office and now you're at term, but your blood pressure is 170 over 107. That's high, that's very high, that's concerningly high. They will send you to labor and delivery for treatment because we have to bring that blood pressure down because you are at risk for that stroke and that seizure. Those are the biggest complications and, and then also I can say just organ involvement. We wanna keep you healthy. We wanna treat those blood pressures, okay? So you can expect to move your way to labor and delivery. Let's say it's earlier in your pregnancy, all right? And you're 31 weeks like I mentioned in part one and your blood pressures are maybe in the 140s but they're not getting worse. You're maybe not spilling protein in your urine, or maybe you are, but they're still stable. Maybe they would give you an antihypertensive medication that would be a pill to help keep your blood pressure stable throughout the pregnancy because your baby needs you growing them to be big enough and healthy enough, particularly their lungs being ready enough for the outside world before we kind of push you into labor and help that delivery or that birth to happen. So that's gonna be a conversation you have with your provider, which is safer, and they're helping you to determine that. Now, with any kind of medical intervention or any kind of medication or any kind of treatment, I wanna be very clear, I want you to go watch my Your Patient Rights video. I will link it down below because I wanna remind you that every decision is yours to make. But especially the moment we start to get into these high risk pregnancy conditions where there is risk to you and there is risk to your baby, you have a provider, meaning a doctor or a midwife or your nursing team or your medical team there to, to look at your body and go, I'm concerned. Therefore, we have some recommendations to keep you and your baby safe. While labor and birth is beautiful and most of the time it's normal and natural and you know uncomplicated, Sometimes there are complications that come up in your pregnancy. So this is a huge part of the flex and flow that I talk about where we need to be flexible and go with the flow. If you're faced with an elevated blood pressure or one that's totally out of control and you're needing to go for that early delivery, it is your decision, but also you have to understand the risks involved. And the moment there's a diagnosis, we'll say of preeclampsia in this video, that you have to understand that you are taking risks for your life and your baby's life, okay? So you're weighing that with your provider. The key here is understanding what's going on. So if you don't understand what's going on and you're saying, wait, what's going on around me? Someone talk to me. You may need to advocate for that to get that information. But hopefully once you're on the same page with your provider, they're going to provide that education enough that you're like, oh, okay. I understand the risk of seizure and stroke, and that can lead to a whole slew of complications. Like, hmm, not interested in either one of those. So let's maybe make the decision to go towards that delivery, knowing that the only cure for preeclampsia is birth of your baby. And then your body can be like, oh, okay, let me recover from this. All right. So 
Let's just say that you have all the information you're getting it right now, but let's say that your provider's providing the best shared decision-making conversation with you so you understand what's going on. You're saying, yes, I wanna do everything that you recommend and that's evidence-based to help decrease the risk to me and my baby. What are you looking at for your labor and birth? If you have that preeclampsia, and let's say you're at term, we've already talked about preterm, they're weighing out which when to have the baby or not. If it's totally out of control, you may be looking at an early delivery like a preterm birth. But now you're 38 weeks, you have preeclampsia, you can expect to likely be induced, okay? That's a huge question that I get. Does it mean an immediate C-section? Again, we're weighing out the risks and benefits because in general, vaginal birth is safer than a cesarean, but if your, your blood pressures are totally out of control, we're giving you all the medications to lower your blood pressure, which is a piece of this, and it's still like there's nothing we can do, we know it's not gonna get better until you give birth. And so that cesarean, that cesarean conversation may come up in that case. I will say though, the majority of cases, you're looking at an induction, you're being monitored throughout and moving your way towards birth, okay? That's piece one. But for your labor and birth, people ask me all the time too, what options do I have that now that I have this high risk pregnancy condition, can I be off the monitor? Can I move around freely? Can I get in the tub? Can I do this and that, okay? You can, again, it's hard for me with the, that terminology because again, in bundle birth nurses, we teach all the time that like it's your decision. But the question is, do you recommend these things? And in general, you will have, or you will be recommended less options than you would if you had a totally normal pregnancy. And the reason for that is, particularly because of the medications that they're giving and because we don't want you uh, missing something and maybe having a seizure in the bathtub, which would be different than having a seizure in the bed, okay? So what you're looking at for preeclampsia would be continuous fetal monitoring. We wanna know, is the baby okay? Having an IV for safety measures. Some people will ask, can you not have an IV? You can do whatever you want, remember that script. But if you take my childbirth class, you'll learn all about the reason for an IV. In this case, it will be heavily recommended that you have that IV for that safety mechanism. You may, especially if you're diagnosed with that preeclampsia, you have some sort of lab involvement or symptoms of the preeclampsia, or you've had those severe range blood pressures, which is above 160 over 105, they will recommend and highly encourage you to say yes to a magnesium sulfate medication. And what that does is it's a medication that goes in your IV, it can make you really hot and flushed. Um, it can sometimes burn the site initially, like your IV is like, ow, that hurts for about 30 minutes and then they slow it down and you're on that medication throughout the course of your labor into postpartum because what that does is it decreases your risk for seizures. We want that. We don't want you seizing in labor, okay? So that magnesium is gonna be highly recommended and the standard of care if you were to have those severe features and they wanna treat with magnesium. The other side effect of magnesium that I wanna note here is that magnesium in general is a muscle relaxant. I recommend it. If you have leg cramps, you can take it in a supplement form. That is a common like sign and symptom of pregnancy, not symptom of pregnancy, but like a sign, something that happens during pregnancy. It makes you feel super lethargic where you're like, and the longer you're on it, people just kind of feel icky. They feel kind of floppy. They feel kind of weak, which puts you at risk for falling, which is why likely in labor, your nurse is gonna want you in the bed rather than up and walking the hallways and all over the place because you are a fall risk for that. It also is a high risk medication. So there is risk if you were to become and have too much magnesium in your body, that can be that can be harmful on you. It can actually like decrease your respiratory rate, decrease your reflexes, and cause further complications. So we wanna be making sure that you're in the hospital having that nursing care that's watching and paying attention to you if you're on magnesium. It can just make you feel kinda of icky, okay? Now, again, that decreases your risk for seizures, so ideally that is what we want. The other thing they're gonna be doing is taking your blood pressure significantly more regularly than maybe they would if you didn't have this condition because we wanna know, knowing that we're moving towards birth, but we know it's not gonna get better. We wanna make sure that all of a sudden you're not throwing, throwing, throw range blood pressure or high severe range blood pressures, which just means that you don't have blood pressures that need to be treated. Any blood pressure over 160 over 105 
will require medications to help bring down the blood pressure that likely will go in your IV. They're going to watch you. They're going to be more on top of you, not literally, but your nurse is going to be there really paying attention and doing all of her nursey interventions and assessment skills to help make sure that we're not moving into a more complicated case. Okay. We want you keywords stable. We want your blood pressures good. We want you moving towards delivery. That could include induction management. So you can watch my induction videos to know what that would look like. But otherwise on top of the monitoring magnesium and potential blood pressure medications, maybe a C-section if we can't, those blood pressure medications don't do anything. That's it. Everything else is moving your way towards birth. So changing positions in bed, doing all of your coping, having access to an epidural if you want one or IV medications or even nitrous oxide if, you're, if your hospital provides that, that you labor. And that's the key I want to leave you with for any high risk pregnancy condition, that you have a care team that is there keeping you safe. They are applying all of their extensive knowledge and research and degrees and time and effort to apply their their best for you to keep you and your baby safe. Let them do their job. Let them stress about the seizure and stroke. Obviously you're paying attention to your symptoms. You're reporting if you feel something off, any of those signs of preeclampsia. Hey, I all of a sudden have the worst headache in the world. Let your nurse know that, but your job is to focus on yourself, on your baby, on your partner, on your support team, and focusing on laboring and letting the nursing team, especially, but your medical team take care of the rest. Thanks everyone for being with me here today. I hope you found that super helpful. Again, if you're diagnosed with preeclampsia, take a big deep breath, take it one moment at a time, flexing and flowing, asking questions about what to expect, what this looks like, when will you recommend an, a birth for me? Is it now? Is it later? And then try to focus on your baby and connecting and not letting this scary scenario, potentially scary scenario, overtake your entire birth experience. It's one of those things, a hump in the road, we're gonna flex and flow and go with it and then trust in your medical team to take the best care of you possible. If you want more from me, you can head on over to the description box down below. I have childbirth classes. One of the, the classes I would really recommend taking, particularly related to this stuff, is my medical interventions class. Really, you need the childbirth bundle. That's gonna give you a full childbirth class and that's gonna help you understand what are some of these medically things that could come up along the way? What happens if you had to have a C-section? What can you expect? How do you make the best of that experience? That class for this, I would highly recommend, all, along with all the other of my classes. Get yourself a childbirth class and fill yourself with that knowledge so you can baseline have confidence going into your birth, not being thrown so much new information. It's more reinforcement. And then you can focus on your baby, your body, and your partner while you labor. Make sure you subscribe down below. Make sure you follow me over on Instagram for more information. And then until next time, don't forget to flex and flow and I will see you soon. Bye.